dig in. And there's legacy code. Remember, legacy code is any code you haven't written yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Every company already has tons of legacy code, even startups, even on day two, there's legacy code. So the developer gets the shiny 30-inch LCD and starts digging in, starts looking and, and for every piece of code that needs to be studied, there's five or six other pieces of code that are referenced. And starts digging into that and realizes that for every piece it's the same and it's a rat's nest. This makes the developer mad. <laughs> so the developer does what is right and natural and kills all the developers responsible. <laughs> Names the ones they're a little less guilty <laughs> and goes to jail. <laughs> Thus making the world a better place, but not able to affect it much longer. Or developer goes to a new place, starts digging into the code, finding the dependency, finds the rat's nest, gets angry, but pulls out tools and starts to attack the problem, hurts the code, attacks the code, maims the code. <laughs> and eventually, SNCC, that's right, SNCC, eventually gets the code cleaned up and shows the code who's boss. <coughs> what is the moral of this story? It's quite simple, actually. People will press charges if you hurt them. <laughs> Code won't. <laughs> so this talk is a coming out event for me. I bet a few of you, especially down here, will expect me to show up in chaps and <laughs> leather vests and stuff. That's not going to happen. My name is Ryan, and I like to hurt code. <laughs> And I'm okay. Hi, Ryan. <laughs> so why hurt code? I like to hurt code because it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It can make you a better tester and developer. You think about code in new ways. And it makes your code cleaner, or can make your code cleaner, clearer, and easier to test. I think these things are important. So Ruby State is I define as deriving pleasure from inflicting pain on software especially bad software. It's just another way of looking at software development. I cackle every time I can find code I can punish. <laughs> and a number of you have paired with me and can attest to that. Code that has complexity I know I can strip out. That's what I'm looking for. It's about changing your perspective on bad code. If you make it fun to hunt it down and fix it, you're going to do it more often. It's, it's Pleasure. So you do it more. It's a pellet. So Ruby sadism comes in many forms. The most obvious is killing a bug by writing a new test. We've all done it. You're all sadists to one form or another. Reading overly clever code, rip itching to rip it to shreds. I do this too much. <laughs> Especially reading Rails code. <clears throat> <laughs> Nuking bad design, making it faster with less code. Many, many, many more options. I'm sure you can think of three on your own right now. So as an example, I worked both with a client and a company that hired me um, on a social media risk project that should have lasted two to three months. There was nothing overly complex about it. It lasted 12 plus. I think they shipped after 20 or so. And the main problem, at least the problem up front, was they were being too clever. They were trying to tie Active Record to WebDAV, emulating the entire database via WebDAV properties. Now understand, WebDAV is a transport serialized over HTTP via XML. That's not a database transport. That, that is a web client transport or web services transport. It is not meant for that much data that fast. As a result, it was needlessly complex and incredibly slow and getting slower every time we made it more towards the design that we were planning. So I spent a weekend, and it was only a weekend, it wasn't that bad, um, and I ripped WebDAV out, and the results were dramatic. They're not clicking. Click. 
So we're on a good day, we were getting 74 seconds for a full test run of 622 tests. After I ripped WebDAV out, it was averaging five seconds with just half the tests. So we made it 15 to 20 times faster ripping out half the tests. Really about two thirds of what we were able to rip out because the implementation was pretty heavy. And as you see over time, um, this is the test time over six months, and the first, I don't know, 10% of it, 20% of it, um, the tests weren't even running consistently. They wouldn't finish all the time. They wouldn't work right. Um, so I spent my time working on that, because you need a stable platform to work upon. So once we did that around November, late November, early December, you notice the times start getting slower and slower as they start adding more functionality. In some cases, they, they were dramatic. That is bad, that is good. <laughs> um, so we worked on profiling the tests and the implementation and making it faster. And we did get good results out of that, but there's only so much you can do. We were averaging about 80 seconds. So it wasn't until I ripped out DAB that we saw big change. And it was big change. It made things a lot more easy. People started running the tests all the time. And as a result, development sped up. For some reason, and I have to explain this in my experience, people love complexity. I remember first experiencing it at a print shop. Yes? Hey, can you move your mic up? I'm having a hard time hearing you. I'm getting lopsided. 